Got it? Okay, good. So let's keep conservation of energy first. Law of conservation of energy. Okay, so this law says that energy is neither destroyed nor created. something that has potential energy, like I put an object up here, it has potential energy because it has height. If I drop it, right, it starts moving downward, that potential energy turns into kinetic energy. When it hits the floor, it stops. Now it doesn't have any kinetic energy. So the energy isn't destroyed, it goes somewhere. The energy turns into sound, which is given off into the air and ultimately heats up the air a little bit. And when it hits the ground, it heats up the ground. Very little, not enough that you could measure it. But if I had a really big weight and I dropped it repeatedly on the ground, you would notice the ground would start to heat up. You also see it with, um, you take a hammer and start banging on a nail or something like that, you'll notice it gets hot sometimes. So this gives off energy. And then that energy is dissipated into the air and the ground around us. And then our Earth, you know, we're giving off energy in the form of radiation from the space and other places. And so we eventually lose that heat. But it doesn't disappear. It just goes to different places. Um, and so that's with all energy. You know, you use up gasoline in your car, and then you stop your car, or you start, you move your car, and so that gasoline turns into kinetic energy, your car starts rolling, and then you slam on the brakes and your car stops, but that energy doesn't disappear. Your brakes heat up, so you've created heat, and that heat is energy. So you're always turning energy from one thing into the next thing, but it doesn't go away. It's always somewhere in the universe, it's always going to come back, with the one exception if, if you turn energy in the matter, then it disappears. So that's the law of conservation of energy. And that relates to heat transfer, which is what we're mostly going to talk about today. Okay. All right, so two things about heat transfer. First off, uh, let's do pluses. Heat travels from hot objects. cold objects. This isn't actually a law. Um, heat could theoretically go the other way, but it usually doesn't. All right. Uh, however much heat one object loses, This is the conservation of energy part. If you take energy out of something, it has to go into something else. So let's say um, I have my hot cup of coffee, and after it sits here for a while, it cools down, and it loses, I don't know, 5,000 joules of energy. Well, then something had to take that 5,000 joules of energy. So that much had to go into the air, or the table, or the combination of the two. Some of the energy went to the air, some went to the table. But the total energy that went into other stuff has to be the same amount as whatever this lost. It has to be exactly the same. There can't be any extra, and there can't be any less. All right. Uh, you want to get into that? No, we'll talk about that. All right, so types of heat transfer. Okay, so there's three types. 
Uh, triangles now. Uh, conduction. Kind of running out of the periods and crosses and dots. Conduction is heat transfer. two solid things. So imagine if I take a, a frying pan and I put it on top of a hot plate or something like that. The heat's traveling from the hot plate to the frying pan being heated up and that's conduction. It's two solid objects touching each other and the heat's going from the hotter one to the colder one. It has to be solid objects. Uh, convection So this would be, a fluid is either a liquid or a gas, right? Anything that flows is a fluid. Why nurses and doctors tell you to drink fluids instead of saying liquids, I have no idea because you can't drink the gas. But anyway, um, so imagine anything like um, you jump into a pool of water, your body starts cooling down, that heat's being taken away by the water, that's convection. And uh, same thing if you're just standing here and there's air cooling you off, that's convection. Uh, and then what tends to happen is because the fluids can move, they do move. So the air that heats up around me, if I'm like hot and I'm heating up the air around me, that air will expand a little bit and then it'll be less dense and it'll rise. And then fresh cool air will come in and cool me off more and then that air will rise and so on. So usually the fluids are moving. Um, could be a fan blowing over something so now more air is being brought in to cool the person down and so on. All right, last one. Uh, Radiation. Okay, so this one, how do I want to say this? I want to say this is heat transfer that does not require physical contact. objects don't have to be touching and they don't have to have air or liquid connecting them. They don't have to be physically connected by anything. Uh, so light is a form of heat uh, radiation that's coming to you and it doesn't need any uh, medium in between you. Right? Light comes from the sun and there's no air between us and the sun. Uh, microwaves are another form of radiation. Now radiation is you know, the most misunderstood thing probably on earth, right? Because these forms of radiation, light, microwaves, they're not damaging to you. Um, some forms of radiation are, some aren't. But we're exposed to radiation all day long. Um, our bodies give off radiation, it's called black body radiation. Your cell phone gives off radiation. Uh, your radio receives radiation. Uh, all these forms of radiation are fine. The only ones that are dangerous are the ones that are the very high energy ones, UV, X-rays, and gamma rays. The lower energy ones are fine. Um, but you don't need any physical contact for these things to add heat to you. Uh, if you've ever been to a bonfire, you'll notice something interesting. You don't actually have to be close to the fire for you to feel the heat from the fire, right? And it's not coming through the air because if you put your hand in front of your face, you'll notice it doesn't feel as hot anymore. And then you move your hand and you feel heat again. So obviously that's not conduction or convection because your hand wouldn't stop the air from flowing towards you. So that's radiation from the fire. It's the light from the fire that's actually heating your face up. And once you block that, then you stop your face from being heated up. So that's a form of radiation. Um, in all these, remember, it's always more heat is going to the colder object from the hotter object. So I put ice cubes in the water. The ice cubes are taking in heat. The water is losing heat, right? So it's always whatever's hotter is giving up the energy. Whatever's colder is gaining the energy. All right. Uh, let's move on. I got two more definitions I want to give you before I finish up that relate to this. This is all stuff that I think is pretty easy, and hopefully some of this you've heard before. So you kind of 
try to skim through this a little bit. All right, conductor, I'm sorry, conductor and insulator. Nice. So conductors are materials that conduct heat well. Very simple. Materials that conduct heat well. And so generally, if you have a situation where you want heat to be transferred, you're going to use a conductor. So your frying pan that you put on the stove, you want that to be a good conductor of heat because you want it to conduct heat from the stove into the frying pan itself, and then you want it to give off heat from the pan to the food. So you want heat to flow through it very quickly. So that's something that you would want to be a good conductor. Uh, the heater is made of pipes, and those pipes have metal on the outside of them. And that metal you want to be a good conductor of heat, to take in the hot of the heat from the water and then give off heat to the air. Same thing. So anything that's meant to transfer heat, heaters, air conditioners, things like that, should be good conductors. On the other hand, insulators are the opposite. These are materials that are poor conductors of heat. Okay, so here you would think, where do I want to stop heat transfer from happening? Well, if it's winter time and it's cold in the house, you want to heat stop heat from leaving your body. So you put a blanket on top of yourself and it prevents heat transfer. The blanket is a very good insulator. It works both ways. If you took a cold soda and wrapped it in a blanket, your soda would stay cold. If you took a hot drink and wrapped it in a blanket, it would stay hot. Because it just prevents heat from either leaving or going into the object. It just stops the transfer of heat. Uh, oven mitts, or even the handle on a frying pan, you want the handle to be a poor, inch, a poor conductor, right? You want the frying pan itself to conduct heat, but the handle should not conduct heat because you don't want to transfer heat from the stove to your hand. That would be a bad thing. So anything that's supposed to prevent heat transfer would be an insulator. The insulation in your house, the same thing. You want to prevent heat from escaping your house when it's cold outside. You want to prevent heat from coming into your house when it's uh, warm outside. So you have insulation so you can control the temperature easier. Uh, anything like that. A cooler, right? You put drinks in a the cooler, they stay cold. If you put hot drinks in it, they would stay hot. Either way, it just prevents heat transfer. Your questions on that? All right, I can tell I've talked long enough. Yes. All right, this one should be pretty easy. I'll ask you if you have questions. No math today. Uh, 